How are you now and how have you been coping during the COVID-19 health crisis? Times have been tough, I know, in the last 14 months as we have been surrounded by external dangers and internal conflicts, threatening lives and undermining health and well-being. It's good that we can pause a while now and reflect on where we're at, what we're doing and where we are going. Maybe you have managed to ride out the situation well and discovered inner reserves of resilience you didn't realise that you had or have received help and support from unexpected people. On the other hand, you may be someone who has experienced the devastation of the disease itself or stricken at the loss of friends or family. Perhaps you are grieving at losing a job, a hope, a love or a home and are rather frail and vulnerable, afraid and lonely. You might be in pieces like a bomb-damaged house where the roof has fallen in. How can you get over such disaster? Find restoration. Be refreshed and renewed. What is the best way to push despair back and rebuild rather than sink further down into the trough? Jesus points out to us the dangers of internal conflict and collapse, saying, If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Dark forces can sabotage our efforts to live well and fruitfully, giving rise to fragmentation with unwholesome thoughts, speech and actions and numerous troubles. Jesus helps us develop resilience to the darkness. He nurtures us so that we can learn and develop, so that as time goes by, we are trusting him more and becoming stronger in faith, hope and love. He encourages us to focus on God as our central priority and revere the Holy Spirit. He wants us to seek out and spend time with people who reflect loving kindness, who will reinforce our goodness and help us to grow. Jesus knows that his brothers do not recognise his destiny and will block his mission, so he seeks out kindred spirits himself, not with his family, but with his followers, saying, Here are my mother and my brothers. So back to today and a turning point in our lives. Where can we best find sanctuary, feeling Jesus walking beside us, upholding and leading us? Where can we hear the still small voice and find the timeless peace which passes all understanding? One of the places I manage to find sanctuary is in the church house gardens, walking beside the bandstand and the lake, then up the stone steps through the rockery to the pavilion at the top near Bromley Parish Church. I recall the picnics, games and happy times there as a child and feel that God is close by. Interestingly, the church and church house were both bombed in the Second World War and the rockery, steps and balustrade were all made from the rubble of the old buildings. The fragments of rubble have created something new with the pieces fitting together like a jigsaw each slotting into place neatly. We can be reminded of the words of Octavia Hill, who founded the National Trust. She believes that our lives are overcrowded, overexcited, overstrained. We all want quiet. We all want beauty. We all need space. Unless we have it, we cannot reach that sense of quiet in which whispers of better things come to us gently. Amen. <laughs>